Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. My name is Jessica. If you are, thank you so much for clicking on this video today. Today I am finally getting around to sitting down and filming my Pandas Eyeshadows update for the month of November. I am very behind in a lot of my panning updates and this is my last one that I need to film to catch up. So we are right here in mid-November. Today is the 15th and I can't put off filming this video any longer. Even though I am very tired today, we are in the final stretch before Thanksgiving break at school and it's the first break in a very long long stretch, many weeks, many weeks of full weeks of teaching. So I'm very much looking forward to the break coming up, um, but I'm just powering through this week and trying to get everything done and caught up even from Halloween. I'm still catching up from there. So sorry this video is late. It's going to be a longer amount of progress than it normally is for my Panos Eyeshadows updates. And it's going to be a quick update because I'm not rolling anything out and that means I'm not rolling anything new. And I'm honestly okay with that because mama needs a little bit of a break. It's been a lot of painting this year and I've been very successful in meeting a lot of my goals, but I'm also just getting worn out. We're getting so close to the end of the year. I'm in that final stretch, that final sprint to the finish line. And I really have to remember to, you know, just keep breathing. <laughs> it's all for fun though, of course. So before I get into this video, as you know, this project was created by Alexi here on YouTube, who I don't think has a channel or post to her channel anymore, but I always have her linked in the description box down below. And it has changed and morphed into many different things as it has grown in popularity across the YouTube community. And everybody kind of makes their own little rules and does it their own special way. So I'm always working on five eyeshadows at a time, ultimately with the goal to hit pan on them. But if I use them at least 30 times and over three months of use, and I still don't have pan, then in that case, I give myself permission to roll that eyeshadow out and bring in something new, even if I haven't hit the pan on it. So let's start this video. But before we do, if you haven't already, please take a moment to give this video a quick thumbs up, hit that subscribe button so that you can be here for all of my project pan updates and whatever else I have the time and energy to post for you and leave a comment down below at any moment if you like my eyeshadow looks if you want to send me some motivation over this virtual platform it's always appreciated let's get started the first eyeshadow is from my Give Me Glow Pastel Dreams palette, and I've been working on the blue shimmery shade in here called Pika Blue. Here's what Pika Blue looks like in the swatch. You can see how shimmery it is. It is very impactful, very metallic, a beautiful shade, but it's been hard for me to work on during this time of year. I do have a shade from this eyeshadow palette in my look today, but it's not the blue shade, it's the green shade. So I have been reaching for this palette more than just the Pika Blue shade that we've been working on in this project. So here's what Pika Blue was looking like when I first brought it into the project two months ago. I used it six times during the first month. Here's what it was looking like last month after those six uses. And in the past month, I'm sad to say, I only reached for this two additional times, making for eight uses total. And here's what Pika Blue was looking like today. And you might see a slight change. I mean, I highly doubt it. If you do, it's gonna be very, very subtle and you have a very keen eye. So obviously after those eight uses, I'm nowhere close to pan. I'm gonna keep this one in. I'm gonna try and reach for it as many times as I can before this project is over for 2023. But I don't really have a lot of hope in hitting pan on this eyeshadow. If I use it a couple times, that'll be great. Maybe I'll do like some frosty wintry looks that are inspired by this shade. That would be fun to do. But I'm just kind of gonna coast along with this shade and see what I can get for you by the next update. Hopefully a deeper pan and I'll be pretty satisfied with that. So that is all for Pika Blue. A beautiful palette, a beautiful shade to have around, but just not really what I'm feeling like wearing during these fall months. You can understand that, I'm sure. Next shade is this one here, Cherished. This is like a very pale pink, milky white shade from the Huda Beauty Rose Quartz palette. Such a gorgeous palette. I love having this one out on my vanity. I love reaching for it. I've been having a lot of fun with the shades in here, not just with Cherished. So this is what Cherished was looking like when I first brought it into the project. I don't think it had much use on it at all. I reached for it 13 times in the first month. Here's what it was looking like. And in the past month, I reached for it a whopping 22 more times, making for 35 uses total. And here's what Cherished is looking like today. And after those 35 uses, you can see there is a nice little dip forming on Cherished. It's wearing out quite evenly across the pan because I'm using larger brushes with it but it is getting quite low in the pan but no pan yet in sight I think there might be one coming soon this is an eyeshadow that I'm very hopeful to hit pan on before the year is up and just add one more pan to my pan percentage and I continue to reach for it as much as I have been I don't think that'll be a problem at all I've mainly been using this eyeshadow as an all over the lid setting shade and a highlight shade I really love it to brighten up the inner corner and my brow bone that like little pinkness kind of cancels out any purple or blue tones in my under eye area. And I also love it just as an all over the lid mixed with another cream shade. Cause like all over by itself is a little too pink unless I'm 
doing like a pinky or mauve toned look all over. But if I just want to use it for every day and have it as a setting shade for any look that I'm wearing, whether it's pinky toned or not, I can mix that with a cream shade and it really um, dilutes the pink and makes it a lot more subtle and just a nice overall setting shade for the eye to start off an eyeshadow look with, a nice base. Other shades in here that I've been loving reaching for are Moon Magic. I've worn that one a few times. I also reached for Energize the other day, a beautiful like cool tone gold. I love that shade. And I've also reached for Joy once or twice with my pink eyeshadow that I'm currently panning. And then I've also reached for Self Love as like an inner corner. I just love the duochromes in here so much. It's one of my favorite palettes in my collection and I'm just loving having it around. Even though I'm painting like one of the more basic boring shades, it's just a great excuse to reach for this one and have fun with it. And I also reached for Love Stone a couple times and I really actually like that shade for like just a really clean, easy makeup look to add just a little bit of shimmer on the lid. So that is all for my Rose Quartz palette. This one is staying in one more month and I'm hoping I will have a pan for you by the next update. This next eyeshadow rolled in just last month. It's from my Shanixo The Remix palette and it is the shade Bestie. There's a swatch of Bestie. It's very pretty, just like rosy pink shade. I love wearing pinks on my eyes. It's not like my favorite look for fall, but I've been enjoying reaching for pinks all the same. So here's what Bestie was looking like last month. It had a little bit of use on it, but not much of a dip at all. I was able to reach for this shade eight times during the past month. And here's what Bestie's looking like today after those eight uses. And you can see there is a little dip starting to form here. The pans in this palette I know are quite low. So this is another shade that I think I should be able to hit before the year is over. I think if I reach for it eight more times, maybe 10 in the next month, I should have a pan on that one, no problem. So I'm happy with the progress on Bestie for now. And overall, I have reached for some other shades in this palette. In fact, I reached for Holy Grail and I got a little bonus pan in Holy Grail. Holy Grail had a nice, size dip in it and I reached for it just a couple more times as a highlight shade when I had this palette out and in my hand and that helped me get that little bonus pan in there which I have not had a bonus pan in many many months of this project I think because I've just been spreading my energy across so many different eyeshadow projects bonus pans have not been a thing but we have one and that's exciting. And that's another pan I get to add to my pan percentage that I wasn't even really expecting or trying for. However, Holy Grail is really not performing the way that it used to. It's quite dull. It doesn't have the shimmer and shine. I mean, this swatch is actually pretty nice, but I don't know, whenever I put it on the eye, I'm just a little disappointed with it. Maybe my tastes have changed. Maybe the formula is just getting a little bit old. I don't know, but I just like can't bring myself to get rid of this palette, at least not yet. I really do like the mattes in here. I like the design of this palette. I like the color story and I love Shanix so, and it just has like a kind of nostalgic, sentimental attachment to it. So that one is sticking around at least for a while and Bestie hopefully will have a nice pan on it by the next update for you as well. This next shadow also rolled in just last month. It comes from my ColourPop She's a Rainbow palette and I've been working on the mint green matte, this one right here, and it's called Looking Fresh, another like milky white-based eyeshadow shade. And I do have this eyeshadow in my look today. I used it to basically set most of my lid and blend into my crease with that like darker green shade. I'm pretty happy with how this look came out. It's not my favorite. I've had a hard time wearing this eyeshadow. I will be totally honest. Here's what it looked like last month when I first brought it in. Basically a clean slate, hardly reached for it at all, maybe once, if anything. Unfortunately, I only was able to reach for it three times in the past month after those three uses. Here's what it's looking like today. And I don't know if you'll see much of a difference in that pan at all. Maybe a slight disturbance in the surface. And I have no hope on hitting pan on this before the year is up. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna bring it back into my project in 2024. But we'll see. I'm going to think about it for now. And I'm sorry I don't have better progress on that one for you. But again, I've just been feeling a little bit tired. And like minty green, again, is not like my favorite look to wear in the fall. It's okay. I just feel like it kind of like stands out in a weird like way with my skin tone. I don't think it's the best shade for me. Unless I really want to do like a colorful, interesting pastel look. Which I'm not really wearing in my day to day. And I'm um, not really feeling in the season. So I'm not forcing it. I'm just like accepting where my makeup tastes are taking me right now. And I'm still getting a little bit of progress and that's just fine by me. 
And the last eyeshadow in my Easter spring themed color palette here is this one. This is Lazarus, this like gray toned taupe shade. This comes from the Kat Von D Shade and Light Eye Palette. So this came into my project just last month. Here's what Lazarus was looking like last month. I was able to reach for it eight times in the past month, which I'm pretty happy with. It's better than I did in some other shades. And here's what Lazarus is looking like after those eight uses. And I doubt you'll see much of a difference, even though we got a good number on that one. It's such a densely packed shade and I'm using such a fluffy brush with it and it's such a large size pan that I doubt you'll see much of a difference. But I'm gonna continue working on this one for the next month. I don't think I'll be able to hit pan on it before the end of the year, but I'm gonna do my darndest. I'm gonna reach for it as much as I can. Maybe I'll be able to get to 30 uses if I just reach for it a little bit more often. Maybe I can reach for it in my brows. That's definitely a possibility. And who knows what I'll be able to get to if I just put a little bit more effort into this one because it definitely has been kind of sitting on the back burner. I've just been feeling more of the warm tones recently. Or if I'm doing cool tones, I've been feeling more of like the pinkies and mauvies that type of thing. But this does pair well with those types of shades. So if I put my mind to it, I think I can get better use on this one and have a nice little dip for you by the next update. So that's all for my five shades. And like I said, I'm not rolling anything out. So nothing new is going to roll in. Moving on to pan percentage. I do have some updates for you there. Even though I didn't hit any of the pans in my Pandas eyeshadows currently, I did have that bonus pan and then another pan for my Project Level Up series, as well as a pan from my Pan That Palette series. So I'll go ahead and link both of those series right here so you can see those pans they do exist and you can check them out if you haven't already. I started the year with 466 individual shades of eyeshadow in my makeup collection and of those 466 shades I had pan in 12.02 percent of them in January. So my goal for this year was to reach 20 percent and I'm happy to say I surpassed that goal I believe I think it was two months ago I hit the goal so I've just been building on it since then and it's been really great to see how far I can go. So as of last month I had pan on 101 out of my 466 shades bringing my pan percentage to 21.67 percent and now I have those three new pans to add to that. So bringing my total up to 104 pans out of my 466 eyeshadows and my new pan percentage is 22.32%. So I'm so happy with where I've been able to get to this year. I've jumped up my pan percentage 10% in less than a year and I'm hopeful that I'll have at least a couple more to add to that before the year is up. I'm very excited for my next update. The next update will be my finale. I'm not going to be rolling in anything. I'm going to be taking a little bit of a break for the month of December. December, and then we'll probably start fresh in January with a brand new color palette for 2024. But definitely stay tuned for my finale video because I'm going to be going through every pan that I've hit in my Pan Those Eyeshadows project and telling you also all of the eyeshadow palettes that I reach for using this project. So it's going to be really fun. I'm going to recap the entire year and I know you don't want to miss it. So before I wrap up this video, I am going to share with you a few of my favorite eyeshadow looks I created in the past month. I was not the best about taking pictures again, but we got a couple in there. And I also included some that don't include Pamela's eyeshadow shades just because it's fun and I want to share my makeup looks with all of you. So starting off with this look here, this is a look that I wore to the Taylor Swift Eras movies. So I was channeling Taylor. That's why I have this massive winged eyeliner in this look. And I really love how this look turned out. I felt very ethereal and beautiful. I have cherished all over the lid in this look. That goes without saying. And then I have Lazarus in the crease just to deepen it up a little bit. I put that like gooey shade Love Stone from the Rose Quartz palette all over the lid and then topped it with like a little bit of Moon Magic. Topped that all with that massive, massive wing. And I love a big wing. It just makes me feel very classy. And I just love playing with eyeliner. It's one of my favorite accessories in my makeup collection. This next look I wore in Disneyland. Me and my friends did a Star Wars bound one day. All of us dressed as different Star Wars characters and we went to Galaxy Galaxy's Edge and took so many different pictures. I was channeling Ewok in my look and I created this little hood and this little green Ewok inspired makeup look where I did in fact use Looking Fresh from the ColourPop She the Rainbow palette. And I was having a lot of fun with this one with the gemstones and the color and it's just fun to dress up at the park. So here's a picture of me and all my friends in Galaxy's Edge. We are huge dorks, we know, but we love it. We accept it. We are who we are and we're having fun. So don't hate. This is another makeup look that I wore in Disneyland. I don't think this includes any Panda's eyeshadows. I mean, maybe Cherish, probably Cherish. This is basically my setting shade in almost every makeup look I created this month. So it could be there. But this was a nice little witchy look I created. And funny story, there was this very rude man at the security line at Disneyland who looked me up and down and told me that I was not going to be allowed in the park with that makeup on. That's what he said. They're not going to let you in with makeup like that. And I was just like, excuse me? 
I literally looked at him right in the face and I said, sir, I think I'll be fine. And I like turned around and walked away. Like he was trying to like keep me back from going into the park. I was like, no, sir, I'm fine. I'm sorry if my makeup offends you. It's Halloween. Like this is ridiculous. So forget that man. You know, I'm not here for any man trying to tell me what kind of makeup I'm allowed to wear. So, you know, we're just flicking two birds. You know what I mean to men like that. Okay. Don't need your opinion. Didn't ask for it. Thanks. But I loved the look. I was feeling witchy and spooky and I had fun with it. And here's a look of me and all my friends dressed as witches and warlocks in Disneyland having the time of our lives the day before Halloween. Such a great day. This is not my favorite look that I created, but I was able to incorporate a lot of shades from my pan, those eyeshadows into this look. So I have Lazarus all through the crease. I'm sure I have Cherish as my all over the lid setting shade. And then I know for sure that I have Pika Blue on the inner part of my lid in this look. And I don't love how it turned out, especially like the shade in the middle. I forget what I used, but it just was not sticking to my eye. I'm out of glitter glue right now. So that's why it didn't last as I would expect it to, but I'm happy that I got a nice, you know, new experimental look out of my pin those eyeshadows in that way. And this is one of my favorite looks I created. I actually got a ton of compliments on this eyeshadow look when I wore it. This one has Lazarus all through the crease again, Cherish as my setting shade. And then I have Gunmetal for my Lorac Mega Pro 2 Pan That Palette on the outer part of my lid. I have Pika Blue on the very middle part of my lid. And then I used like that cool toned gold shade from the Huda Beauty Rose Quartz Palette. I believe it is, I'll tell you what it is. It's um, Energize, this one here. I have that on the inner part of the lid. And I loved how this one turned out. It was very, very pretty. I wore it with a blue sweater and those little cool tone vibes on a cloudy day were very nice. And this last look I actually wore in a recent video. And this look is obviously incorporating a lot of pink. So I have Bestie in the crease here. And I actually deepened up the crease even more with a very deep magenta blush that I'm currently panning in my rolling project pan. And then I created a nice thick wing with gunmetal from my Lorac Mega Pro 2 palette. And I love how this look turned out. Of course, I topped it with a duochrome. I believe it was moon magic from the Huda beauty rose quartz palette because i could and i love just tapping those over it really just puts any makeup look over the edge and makes it feel so much more beautiful and intricate and gorgeous <laughs> again love and having this palette around and i'm excited to reach for it even more during the next month so those are all from makeup looks. I really hope you enjoyed them. And that brings me to the end of this video. I don't have any pans, so I don't have any rollouts, so I don't have any roll-ins, but I'm excited to continue to work on these five shades. And I am pretty confident that I will have a pan in Cherished for you and in Bestie by the next update. And we'll just see what we can do on these other three. I'm not really sweating it. I'm just going to enjoy the process. And I think I'm going to film the finale for my 2023 Panda's eyeshadows around like December 7th. That'll give me a good three weeks, maybe a little bit more to work on those five shades. And then I'm just going to take a little bit of a break from Panda's eyeshadows and focus on other projects and maybe just, I don't know, enjoy my collection a little bit and reach for whatever I feel like. I know it sounds crazy, but I'm going to go for it. And I think in January, we're going to start fresh, bring in a whole new color palette. My cats are fighting. Beetlejuice, leave your brother alone. They're working on, you know, getting along as siblings. This is a new transition for everybody. And for me, it's a busy time of year. So I'm just excited to kind of slow down a little bit in the month of December and maybe just ease into the projects in January. We'll see. I'm always having fun with it. I love sharing this progress with all of you and I love working on my makeup collection and loving on it and enjoying the things that I already have. So thank you so much for sticking around for all of my panning journey. I love that you're here and I really appreciate your support. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope you're doing really well wherever you are in the world and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. And until then, bye.